What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late into the evening. On Tuesday, the Packers reportedly set to hire Mike Patton, former head coach of the Cleveland Browns and longtime defensive assistant, um, most notably with Rex Ryan, but also uh, on his own as a coordinator in Buffalo, uh, a guy who runs a multiple front, a base 3-4, but absolutely plays between both fronts, 3-4 uh, four and 4-3. Four, a um, bit of a surprise in that he was set to interview today. He must have knocked it absolutely out of the park with Mike McCarthy. Um, there was undoubtedly interest from the Packers in other candidates, most notably Gus Bradley and Vic Fangio. But the end of the day today, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, uh, around there, is the news breaking that Mike Pettin will be the choice and will be the next defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers. So I thought I'd jump on. I said I'd be talking to you if news broke, and this is definitely news, and it's definitely breaking. So I thought I'd jump on and see what's on your mind, see uh, how you guys feel about the hire, and take your questions or comments. Um, Mike says, I feel that we settled on a choice for D.C. I wouldn't really say that. I mean, with Bradley and Fangio still out there, um, and you know, the ability to hire them if they, or even bring them in if they wanted to, um, it's hard to say they settled uh, when they, they grabbed Petten immediately upon the interview, uh, clearly a bit after the interview. Um, sure sounds like, you know, or sure feels like Mike McCarthy uh, thinks this is a good fit. Um, Petten's a former head coach. Uh, that obviously lends some weight as far as his ability to construct a program and get things up and running on the defensive side, which, you know, the real big question now becomes what happens with uh, the holdover on the defensive staff, whether it's Darren Perry, Winston Moss, or Joe Witt Jr. <laughs> Duncan, are you having fun with the early offseason, Aaron? It's, it's different, I'll tell you that. It sure ain't uh, much like the Packers being in the playoffs. <clears throat> Brandon, so is this a good hire? I know nothing about him. Brandon, I'm here to tell you, and you can bookmark it and come back to this in a couple years if it turns out to be incorrect and splatter it all over the Internet for me to eat some much deserved crow, but yes, I believe this is a very good hire from Mike McCarthy and the Packers organization, not only because of his bona fides, uh, because of his history, because of what he uh, cut, the stock he comes from, uh, the Rex Ryan tree, so to speak. Um, he's a better version of Rex Ryan is what I would, my initial kind of 30 second scouting report for you would be. Um, he's a guy who knows everything there is to know on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, does a great job of matching his game plans to a particular scheme that he's facing week by week. Um, obviously, you know, that's yeah. every team does that to some extent. More team, some teams more than others. Uh, I think Petten has done a really good job. He did a very good job of it when he was in Cleveland, of matching whatever the strengths are uh, in regards to his opponent and shaping a game plan week by week, rather than well, we're going to run our stuff and we're going to beat you with it. Um, you know, obviously, there are coaches like that around the league. Petten, uh, to my mind, is not one of them. Was the guy in Chicago even interviewed? Jill, that's a good question. We'll, we'll have to find out. Uh, we know the Packers had interest. We know they reached out. We know they were set to interview him. I don't know if the interview ever took place. Um, that's something I'm sure Tom Silverstein will be uh, reporting on overnight and for tomorrow morning. Well, the defense can't be worse than in this past season. Alberto? Yes and no. Um, you know, they statistically were terrible. So in that sense, you're absolutely right. Um, but, you, you know, as, as far as things like run fits and uh, pursuit angles and things like that, can always get worse. So, uh, but for the most part, what you're saying statistically, you're probably right. Um, now, part of that is going to be in pers on personnel and having to kind of shore up places. It was interesting re-watching Brian Gutenkunst's uh, introductory press conference yesterday where he mentioned, you know, certain groups didn't play well this year. Well, I think we can all pinpoint uh, on our own wh which groups those might be, specifically on the defensive side of the ball. Um, sorry, guys, I'm getting a lot of interest here. It's obviously big news, and it's great to have you all on board. How is he better than Dom, and if so, how much? Well, it's hard to say because he's been out of the game for a little bit. Um, you know, his last gig was in Buffalo. Um, I thought... Uh, Obviously, the, his kind of most high-profile work, if, if you want to call it that, was as a head coach in Cleveland. And I thought he did a fantastic job there of handling a really 
um, messy situation. Obviously, the whole Johnny Manziel thing was going on, but uh, from ownership on down, that, as you guys most likely know, that franchise is a, a real issue. And uh, I thought he did a really good job of getting them up and getting them ready to play week in and week out. Um, and as far as his defensive bona fides, like I said, he is, he's kind of traveled along with Rex Ryan until they had kind of a falling out here in New York when they were both on the Jets staff. Obviously, Rex was the head coach. Um, but he, he's a solid coach and a solid hire. I tend to think he'll do a better job than Dom Capers when it comes to adjusting to what offenses are doing throughout the game. Um, that's something Capers clearly struggled with down the stretch here in his time with, with the Packers. Um, but only time will really tell, given you know we don't really know what his what the personnel is going to look on look look like on that side of the ball until we get at least like to the draft. He spent 2017 consulting with the Seahawks. I I know he was con consulting. I don't remember if it was with the Seahawks specifically. I do know he has been consulting, and I do know he wasn't on a coaching staff this year. Does the two-year hiatus give him fresh energy and time to have uh, study the league? I would think so. Uh, that's what guys typically do when they step away from the game, uh, especially if they have intentions of coming back to it. They want to take that time to study the league, uh, get kind of abreast on new thinking, new, th new, new schemes, new ideas. You have to think he took that time to do exactly that, especially now that he's um, <laughs> interviewed for and gotten a defensive coordinator job. Brennan, you don't sound very excited about the hire. Brennan... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing hurt. I'm, I'm pretty sick. If you saw my uh, Facebook Live earlier today, uh, I'm battling a cold. Um, it's hard to get excited about uh, a hire when you, a lot of it is kind of up in the air and mysterious, uh, given that we don't know exactly what kind of scheme he's going to be running until he kind of uh, lays it out there on the practice field for us. And um, it's not, you know, really my place to be excited or cheerlead it. Um, I think it's a good hire. Uh, I think it's an interesting hire, and I do find it interesting that uh, McCarthy apparently jumped on the first guy he interviewed, um, but as far as excitement level, that's for you guys to take care of. So is he a 3-4 guy or a 4-3? Samuel, he comes from a 3-4 background, but when he was defensive coordinator in Buffalo, he ran everything. He ran all sorts of different fronts. He, he was very multiple, and uh, I tend to think that will continue in Green Bay. Now, we have obviously no way of knowing what he and McCarthy discussed as far as what they want scheme-wise, uh, what they think of the personnel that's already on hand, what they think of the coaching staff that's already on hand. Um, and speaking of which, I did see Adam Kaplan's tweet from ESPN. thought he made a good observation. Uh, there's a decent chance Jim O'Neill uh, out in San Francisco, a former colleague of Pettin's, come, gets a chance to come on board in Green Bay as a coach. Uh, <laughs> Bad to worse with any personnel from Cleveland? Uh, Zachary, no, I disagree. I mean, don't let uh, the idea that he was a head coach in Cleveland give you pause. Uh, the man is a very, very good defensive coach. Um, he has a, a very good track record on that side of the ball from his time in Baltimore to his time with the Jets to his time in Buffalo. Um, you know, I, think he'll, I think this is a really strong hire for the Packers. Was Fangio even talked to? That's a good question. That's something we're going to be trying to find out over the course of this next 12, 24 hours. <laughs> Admit it, you hate the choice. I don't hate the choice. I think it's, I just, I've said repeatedly, I think it's a strong hire. You guys just love to create the drama. And to quote Mike McCarthy, I haven't got time for drama tonight. Are we ever going to hear the term nitro or exotic, exotic blitz package again? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I doubt we'll hear Nitro again, but exotic blitz package, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what Pettin has to cook up. But I do think uh, all that time talking about the Nitro, well, that was fun, wasn't it? Um, was Pettin the reason uh, Cleveland's D was good this year? No. No, he had nothing to do with uh, Cleveland's defense this year. Um, nice move by the Packers. A good defensive coach, I agree. He seems to have a Mike Daniels attitude and approach. Um, he's, a, he's a really interesting guy. I've spoken to him a couple times uh, throughout the years, um, when, especially when he was in Cleveland. I talked to him a couple times at the Combine. I, I, if you guys are really interested in his background, I cannot recommend. There's a book called Collision Low Crossers. I think that's what it's called. Um, about, there's about a year with the Jets, basically. And Pettin is featured throughout that book. Um, Collision Low Crossers, check it out. 
um, it's it's excellent. And he, like I said, he features prominently in it. And uh, you get a lot of really good insight into the kind of guy he is and the kind of coach he is. Robert, bring back the psycho blitz. There you go. Fire Petten, thank you, Dean. Thank you for starting us off in 2018. Ah, uh, Robert, do you think Elliot Wolf will leave? Yes, I do. Um, I kind of went over that pretty extensively in my uh, Facebook Live from this afternoon. Uh, be sure to check that out. But short answer is yes, I do expect him to leave. And I don't have any inside information on that. I haven't talked to Elliot, but that is what I expect him to do. No more pre-snap penalties, guys running on late, and blown coverages every other play now, right? We'll see. <laughs> I'm sure this will answer the question, was it the coaching or was it the personnel? Uh, but you have to think yes. You would think that's a big part of why Dom Capers was finally let go, are those things you just listed, that and the uh, horrible statistical category after category that they found themselves in at the end of the season and last season. Um, but yes, it, A, number one, you you got to get these guys in, into shape and get some kind of substitution pattern worked out. And the specialization has got to be dialed down a little bit. And that is one thing that will uh, will be interesting to watch because towards the end of his tenure in Buffalo, uh, Rex Ryan, not Mike Pettin, but Rex Ryan, his players were very kind of wary and sick of how complicated things were uh, with their defense. Now, that wasn't Pettin's defense, but uh, that is something to kind of look for because obviously Pettin comes from that tree. He comes, that's his, you know, how he was brought up in that system. And that's a real danger. You know, we've just gotten through with Dom Capers and his millions of checks and guys looking totally confused pre-snap and sometimes post-snap. And that's, I would have to think that's something that McCarthy and Pettin talked about at length because it was a real problem for the Packers this year. Will Pettin back Raji? Now you're talking, Tamor. Now you're talking. Pettin's going to replace McCarthy in two years. I doubt that, but you never know. You never know. Um, once again, he has a defensive coordinator uh, who was a head coach at one point. But I tend to doubt it, but you never know. What openings are still open for coaches in Green Bay? Oh, there's quite a few. Um, it really depends on what happens with uh, Perry and Witt. Uh, obviously, they are currently your uh, safeties and cornerbacks coaches. Uh, but both defensive line coaches are now gone. Jerry Montgomery taking a position with Texas A&M yesterday, or it was reported. I don't know if he's officially been uh, announced. But uh, So both Mike Trigovac, who was fired, and Jerry Montgomery have moved on. Um, so there's a good chunk of, you know, kind of maneuvering that has to happen on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, on offense, the wide receivers coach has uh, been filled. Uh, offensive coordinator has been filled. That's Joe Philbin. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do as far as if they keep David Rhea as an offensive perimeter coach. A um, few things to shake out there still. Hopefully we'll give him a pass rush specialist. He's going to be a monster. Marcus, yes. Uh, they need uh, – th that is the big key here. I mean, I think it's a strong hire, and I think any one of those guys, whether it would have been Pettin, Fangio, or Bradley, all would have been strong hires. But the big issue is personnel, to my mind. That's what I've been saying for the last two years. And obviously that's on Brian Gutekunst, so we'll see how he does in regards to supplying Pettin with the personnel he needs to run his defense. If we can get 11 players on the field, the hire was a success. That's a great comment. Um, is Joe Philbin the OC, or are we still searching? Now, Joe Philbin will be your offensive coordinator. How many coaches will Pettin be allowed to bring in on the defensive side of the ball? Good question, Terrence. Uh, that remains to be seen. I think a lot of that will depend on his comfort level with uh, Winston Moss, Darren Perry, and Joe Witt. Um, i got to think they talked about that in their interview. I have little doubt that Patton has already has ideas on that, but what they are particularly, we'll have to wait and find out. Would Patton bring back Sam Shields? Uh, no, Sam Shields' time in the NFL is over. We have... Lira Butler is an assistant coach. Maybe, Jeremy. I know he's thrown it out there on Twitter, and he said he's been calling teams, said he called 11 teams, hasn't heard back from anybody. Um, interestingly enough, people may not remember, Leroy Butler was a coaching intern under Mike Sherman and was looked to be trying to get in, break into coaching until um, you know, McCarthy and Ted Thompson came along. Um, and there's very, there are different accounts of this. I know the, uh, the story that I've seen out there and this may be out there from Leroy, 
is that you know they came in and had no interest in bringing him in. But I've also heard that Leroy at the time was not really interested in the grind of the coaching profession, which, I mean, I can't blame him. The co- coaching life in the NFL is hard. It is, it is a grind, and you are always on. So it wouldn't surprise me if he had stepped away for that reason. But we'll see if he's seriously interested and he keeps drum, beating that drum. Maybe, maybe he gets a shot. Is Petten the sideline guy, correct? I think so, Ben. Um, I'm trying to remember from his time in Buffalo. Obviously, he was, a, I was on the sideline as a head coach in, in Cleveland. I believe he is. Um, now, that may change. You know, He may want to be up in the box. But uh, from what I remember, yes, he, he's the guy who works from the sideline as a defensive coordinator. Bring back Al Harris. All right, Timothy, relax. How about Favre as a coach? Damon, nobody wants that. Everybody go deep on two. Well, coaching positions are still open. Don, I uh, just talked about it a little bit. You can rewind uh, when I'm over. Uh, Packers should let Rodgers go both ways. Nobody wants that. You want him hurt again? Forget about Raji. Jesus. Eric, come on, man. It's tradition. you got to ask about Raji on the Facebook Live. That's how this works, man. Can Petten rush the passer? Uh, not without help. You need some. Is there a, that big a difference between a sideline and box guy? What do people stress about it? It's funny. I, I do. It's that's only become a thing in these last like couple of years, and not just with Packers fans, but I've seen it kind of discussed around various teams um, much more in the in the last few years. And you know, I don't know why what people stress about it for, but I do find it interesting that people are so interested in it. Um, you know, the, the defensive side of the ball. I I want my guy down on the sideline. I want him. Taking, you know, information from the box. Guys looking at, uh, you know, how offenses are lining up, what kind of patterns they're trying to use to beat your your coverages. And I, but I want my the leader of my defense on the sideline, uh, talking to my guys, looking in their eyes, looking, you know, being with the players. So much of defense is read, react, um, playing, you know, with aggression, with emotion. Um, yeah, I want I want to feel that from the defensive coordinator if I'm if I'm a player. That's just me, and I've talked to guys around the league who agree with that sentiment, and I've talked to guys who think, you know, that's ridiculous. So you know, it really depends on what kind of crew you got and what kind of relationship they have with their coach. Uh, do you think a scheme change would – I'm sorry, they go so fast, guys. People complain Caper's scheme was too complicated. I hear similar complaints about Petten, too tough for young guys. That's one thing definitely that will be looked at early on here. Um he seemed to simplify it a bit in Buffalo, uh, but he definitely, like I said earlier, does come from that Rex Ryan uh, kind of tree. That's his root, you know, from his time in Baltimore and New York. And uh, towards the end of Rex Ryan's tenure uh, in the NFL, that's what guys were complaining about. And they're still complaining about it a couple years later. So that is definitely something uh, that will be talked about. I have a little doubt. Now, on the flip side, one of the big things that, has come up repeatedly over the last two weeks is how, you know, Ted Thompson's way of managing the roster is what kind of caught them out towards the end of the year every year because so many injuries would strike and they would be forced playing with young, inexperienced guys down the stretch uh, in a complicated scheme. The idea now, I would think, the hope, I think, in 1265 Lombardi is that Brian Gutekunst will uh, do a much better job of I don't guess not balancing out the roster, but providing a little bit more veteran depth uh, for the inevitability uh, of injury. And when it strikes, they will be maybe, hopefully, be able to do a better job of kind of riding that wave. Uh, do you think Petten can better utilize the talent we bring in? That's a good question, Samuel. Only time will tell. I tend to think so. Um, I do tend to think it kind of plays off of that question I was just answering. Um, yeah, I think any defensive coordinator will be helped if he has veteran guys who've been in the league a while, who, you know, obviously have done the down in and down out year in and year out work as far as identifying coverages and knowing fits and knowing all three levels and knowing how they all fit together. Um, rather than a guy fresh out of college, uh, really green to the ways of the NFL, who's just learning how to be a pro and being asked to be out there in November and December in a really complicated scheme that uh, he's learning on the fly, essentially. 
Um, and not just this, he's not learning the scheme on the fly, but he's learning how to be an NFL player on the fly. And we've seen that again and again um, over the course of the last few years under Ted Thompson. And you have to think with Gutekunst in charge now, uh, for the Packers' sake, hopefully that changes. Uh, will Josh Jones and Kevin King thrive under Petten's scheme? I think Kevin King would, would thrive in any scheme. I really do. As for Josh Jones, that remains to be seen. Um, a big part of that will be obviously how he, he is used. Um, you know, they don't really... He needs to be used near the box. And I'm pretty sure uh, if they do a simple, you know, strong, uh, free safety type alignment and they use him as a strong and they drop him down in the box a lot, yeah, I think he can be successful. That's hyper-simplified. Obviously, it's nowhere near that easy, but that's kind of how I think Josh Jones needs to be used. Um, and obviously, Petten's smart enough to figure that out on his own. Why does McCarthy not feel his seat on fire? Chris, uh, I'm pretty sure he does, actually. Um, he got what he wanted this offseason. He got a general manager who's going to be more aggressive. Um, he got to report directly to the CEO and president. And he's going to get his franchise quarterback back for 2018. I know he got a contract extension of one year, but you know, reality is, if he doesn't win this year and win uh, consistently and take them deep into the playoffs, uh, his name will come up again on the hot seat as far as only having one year left on his deal, uh, meaning he's a lame duck. It'd be very easy for the Packers to move out of that contract at that point. So, I think this is a a kind of a trial run in 2018 to see how this trio works together under Mark Murphy and for you know Mike McCarthy he's got to win he's got what he wanted all across the board he's got bringing his guys like Philbin and those guys back into the fold this is his year he's got he's got to win he's got to win big Quinn Rollins to safety I don't know Sean <sighs> maybe I mean we'll see how he bounces back from the Achilles the guy didn't have speed to begin with, and now he's going to be coming back from a really bad Achilles injury. M maybe. It's possible. It really depends on how he, how he rehabs and how he looks coming back. Um, I'm dubious. Um, I, I just worry about his lack of speed. And now, obviously, you can mitigate some of that at, safe, at the safety position, but um, you know, time will tell. They better, better get Aaron a new deal done now. Aaron, I have little doubt that they, that will happen this summer. All right, guys, I'll take one or two more here. We'll <laughs> Petten bring back Cletius Hunt. That would be great. What's the rush to hire Petten? Avi, that's an excellent question, something I will hopefully be asking Mike McCarthy as soon as I can. Um, seems pretty clear that they had a long interview and Petten got the hire. So, um, yeah, I don't know. You know. Only McCarthy can answer that question, and hopefully we'll get to ask him it pretty soon. Richard Sherman for a fourth. Um... I'm, I would say no, but I would only say no out of reaction and habit because Ted Thompson would never make that deal. But Ted Thompson's not in charge anymore, so who knows? Will the Packers' record be better than the Browns this year? Man, can we let them build rosters first? I don't know. Do you think the defense switches to a 4-3? Sean, I don't think so. I think they'll be... Still, they'll continue to be a 3-4 base, but they will be multiple. Um, his time in Buffalo as a coordinator, he very did a lot of switching uh, of fronts. A lot of it was predicated upon who they were playing game plan-wise week to week. So uh, I think they'll still be a 3-4 kind of principal defense, but uh, I think they'll switch between the two. Why don't they hire the OC as fast? Well, they have. They, they hired Joe Philbin. Check it out, PackersNews.com. TT is gone. No, Ted Thompson isn't gone. He's just scouting. He's out on the road, actually, at an All-Star game this week. Uh, <laughs> Boo's choice for tonight. Charles, I, I, by this cold, I haven't been drinking anything. I was actually just about to get into bed when this news broke. But, uh, you know, I'm always here for you guys. News breaks. i got to come talk to you about it. Uh, but right now, that's a perfect segue for me to say, i got to get to bed. I'm dying. Um, but thanks so much for joining me. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. It's uh, it's it's great to see how many people are interested this late at night. Uh, thanks so much. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. Please check PackersNews.com for all the latest. We'll have it. Um, and all the questions I didn't get to, hopefully, will be answered in Tom Silverstein's piece, which should be up overnight and up tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night.